In the world of lookism, life is intrinsically unfair. Every mature adult knows that equality is a lie. Most people aren't dealt a fair hand. Most people are average. They're insecure about their appearance, their finances, and their future. That's the way of this world. Yeah, I guess it's safe to say it's just like our world. Now our protagonist, Hyung Suk Park, or for those of you who have read Webtoon, you may recall him as Daniel Park, is a short, overweight, and ugly loser who gets bullied 100% of the time when he's at school. Classroom, washroom, locker room, you name it, poor guy just can't catch a break. If the school is a hierarchy, then he places at the very bottom. A sad, pitiful state where death is preferable to life. That is, until one day, he wakes up in the body of another man, and is finally able to make a fresh start, both literally and metaphorically. Now, in the days leading up to that eureka moment, he was being subjected to inhumane bullying. He knew that it was already too late for him at this school, so if he wants to do something about his situation, the only way forward was by switching schools. Unfortunately, his single mother is already working too hard for them to just survive. Calling life tough would be an understatement but Hyung Suk's frustration flows out of his body as he proceeds to punch a hole through their wall. Seriously, if he has such a ruthless punch, he should have just tried using it on the bullies. Anyway, when there's a sports event at the school and his mother's watching, the biggest bullies of the school try to have their way with him once again. I don't think any mother would sit idly by if her son was getting humiliated right in front of her. And so she acts and stands right in front of the bullies and tells them off. This makes things awkward for Hyung Suk, and he ends up doing the one thing he shouldn't have done that moment. That's right, he tells his mother off. He reprimands the only human at that scene who was his ally. Luckily, the mother and son make up soon enough when she breaks the news that he'll be going to a major school in Seoul. She won't be there with him since she can't leave her job, so she tells him to take care of himself now that he'll be living alone. And just like that, a new chapter begins in his life. This is it. He's finally away from all that endless bullying. He can now make a fresh start. He gets himself a little place in the boonies, which I guess is a weird thing to say since any place in Seoul doesn't literally classify as the boonies, but it does so relatively. Anyway, he later bumps into a sweet girl who even apologizes. Unfortunately, this may have been the first time in his life that a girl talked to him in a pleasant voice. He thinks maybe it's different out here in the big city and tries to show off his confidence. Little did he know that her boxer friend, Lee Jin Seung, was together with her. He doesn't take kindly to his creepy attitude and proceeds to beat the living life out of him. That's right, nothing's changed for Hyung Suk back then and even now. He just keeps getting beaten up and humiliated. People begin to enjoy him getting beaten up and some even uploaded online. Poor guy later cries out in pain as he reads the comments of those videos. Everyone's making a fool out of him, which just goes to show you that cyberbullying is indeed very real. This day, he didn't go to sleep, rather he passed out, only to then wake up in the body of another man. I kid you not, his new body is literally radiating. The Riz is on steroids. The abs are impeccable. It was perfect. Perfect, down to the last minute detail. Of course, it takes him a minute, maybe more, to process all of this, especially since his actual body is still sleeping on the ground. He even thinks of calling 911 to report this fiasco, but then sees all those hate comments on the internet. Heck yeah, let's see if anyone has the balls to bully him now that he's the man. Conveniently, he had yet to go to his new school, which means it's time to start his life anew. Speaking of his new school, it's J1 Vocational High, pretty much an elite school from what I've seen. So he shows up in his new body and immediately enters everyone's radar. The women cannot contain themselves. They're visibly drooling. How could they not? This guy now has infinite riz. He goes to take his seat. Surprisingly, it's not next to the window. No, there was already someone sitting on that seat, and it's that boxer guy who beat him up the other day. Ironically, both of them are wary of each other. He's still afraid because he's already gotten his ass kicked by that guy, while the other guy's frustrated because his female friend from that time also can't help herself from looking at Hyung Suk. Naturally, the most popular girl of their class, namely Ha Nyul, puts on some horrendous lipstick and approaches him. This does catch our boy off guard, since if there's anyone on the planet who isn't used to female interaction, it's him. But he surprisingly manages to keep himself from freaking out. Then, during lunchtime, she asks him about the reason why he decided to take up fashion as his major. He keeps it cool and says that it's because he's interested in fashion, which is actually a lie. Truth be told, he didn't have the luxury of choice considering his grades at all. The following day at school, our protagonist seems like he could fall asleep at any moment, and apparently it's not just because of the context of their lecture. Yesterday, when he accidentally tripped over something and was about to fall, his body just instinctively moved 
moved according and did a somersault instead. This felt unreal, and so for the rest of the evening, he ran around the back alleys to try to see the limits of the body for himself. Seriously, his mobility, stamina, and strength are all phenomenal. He does get tired, though, which is why he's now dozing off in class and then soon ends up falling asleep. Of course, falling asleep also means that he'd wake up in his old body. This is a cause for concern since he won't be able to wake up in his new body on his own. But Han Yul does what she does and wakes him up. In the evening, he shows up at the local store to maybe score a job for his old body since, you know, he's awake 24-7 in alternate bodies. Sure enough, when our owner catches a glimpse of our guy, he's mesmerized. Having him on board will definitely increase the female customers, however, he tells the guy that the one doing the job will be his friend. As you may expect, the owner's disappointed when he sees the actual Hyung Suk and pretty much tells him to go home, but once he reveals his extraordinary knowledge of cigarette brands, he's hired on the spot. Things go in the wrong direction right from the get-go when students from his class show up together with Jin Seung and try to buy what they shouldn't. He tries to stop them, but Jin Seung punches him in the face, humiliates him with the boys, and then even takes a photo of him without pants. Not pleasant at all. And to add insult to injury, they laugh about it the next day at school, call him all sorts of slurs and don't even spare his mother from their verbal abuse. Hearing this, Young Sook could no longer keep himself uninvolved. He tries speaking up, but this only further invigorates Jin Sung's anger. And so right then, in that very moment, the boxer challenges our protagonist to a battle. All eyes are on them. Jin Sung wants to destroy Hyung Suk so that his female friend loses interest in the guy, while Hyung Suk, on the other hand, has seen enough punches in his life that he always knows exactly how they're coming. Unfortunately, he had never had the instincts to react in time, but now that he does, how will this unfold? Quickly, Jin Sung throws his first punch. It is stupidly fast, but Hyung Suk just casually dodges it and leaves everyone speechless. And he does it again, and again. When there's no room to dodge, he naturally blocks the punch. It's insane how much he manages to overwhelm Jin Seung just by dodging and blocking. It's almost as if he has Ultra Instinct. Finally, when he sees Jin Seung all open, he lands a punch so strong, the guy practically levitates for a few seconds before falling on the ground. This was insane. The news flies fast, and suddenly everyone in the entire school learns about Hyung Suk. The leader of the Burning Knuckles gang named Bosco also becomes aware of Hyung Suk's existence. He looks like a terrifying dude, but when Hyung Suk's old body is getting bullied and extorted along with another boy named Jiho, Bosco shows up and completely horrifies those bullies. So, he's a good guy. He starts tearing up because he doesn't like it when weak people are oppressed or bullied. The following day at school, when everyone's at the cafeteria and Ha Newell is once again flirting with him, all the boys from the Burning Knuckles gang enter the cafeteria. Hyung Suk remembers what happened last night and how he and Jiho were saved by Bosco, so he calls out to him. But he doesn't know that Bosco has the wrong idea about him. Bosco then confronts and attempts to overwhelm Hyung Suk using his infamous Burning Knuckle grip that completely raises the temperature of the entire room. It's impossible for an ordinary man to break free from his grip, but this is Hyung Suk's new body. He manages to to shake him off with just one hand. It looked like it was about to go down, but then the second in command of the Burning Knuckles gang, Byom J, intervenes and asks Bosco that they should leave. Now, it isn't what he said, it's how he said it that made all the difference. He basically said that it's out of his safety that they should leave, which just lights a fire on Hyung Suk's name. Just like that, he becomes even more of a badass in everyone's eyes. The three dudes who were messing with him and Ji Ho the previous day try inviting him for drinks. Han Yul also shows up since Hyung Suk was coming, and then Jin Sung appears too. They try to get to know Hyung Suk a little better, and so they ask something in the lines of where he lives. He replies that he just lives with a friend, but that somehow causes a misunderstanding, which leads them to the conclusion that he lives with a dangerous criminal. Anyway, he knows that Jin Seung has some content for him, but it airs out when he states that he and Mira look like a couple. Still, when the three dudes talk about the video they recorded of Hyung Suk's other body fighting with Jiho, our protagonist gets mad. He grabs the phone and clenches it so hard, it's completely destroyed. He does pass out right after though, which means he wakes up in his other body. He runs all the way there to pick himself up when asked about who he is, he says that he's Hyung Suk's friend. The others seem cool with him now. Jin Seung even shows him how to throw a punch before they part ways so that he doesn't get himself beaten up again. He tries it out with his old body before going home as well. Sadly, it just barely grazes the punching machine and doesn't feel quite right. Though after he leaves, Bosco notices that the section of the bag which was grazed is now torn apart. This only increases Bosco's interest in it. Next morning, while Hyung Suk tries to start a friendship with Jiho, his mother visits his place. 
She doesn't particularly like the fact that her son is sleeping when he should be at school. When he finally returns in his new body, he introduces himself as her son's friend. She seems worried about her child and asks him if they can talk. Sure enough, he takes her to a Starbucks where they start getting plenty of looks from other customers. Apparently, the second in command of Burn Knuckles works there, but he quickly turns around. Now, his mother's taken aback by the unholy prices, so they just get themselves some coffee and sit down to talk. She asks about her son's situation at school, if he's still getting bullied or something. The tune of her voice could clearly indicate that she was genuinely worried. She then expresses her sadness on how she couldn't do anything to help her son when he was bullied previously. This is all, of course, rather melancholic for our boy as well, since he's literally the woman's son, just in another body. So he tries his best to reassure her that there's nothing to worry about. In fact, Young Sook is already making new friends. Coincidentally, Bosco overhears this conversation. He still sees handsome Hyung Sook as an enemy. So he concludes that this man is actually bullying the other guy all day, every day, and just lying to his mother. Then, before they part ways, she mentions how she's gotten herself a second job and gives him some money for her son. Once she leaves, Bosco immediately takes him to an empty lot. It's pretty obvious that neither of them understand each other's context, and so it comes down to punches really fast. Bosco lands a punch so strong, it puts a dent in the metal. Our protagonist knows that getting hit by a punch this strong may very well kill him, which leaves him no choice but to fight back, and once again, the superior athletic abilities of his new body shine in all their radiant glory when he knocks out the legendary Bosco with a spinning elbow. Incredible. Later, Bosco then appears at the convenience store where old Hyung Sook works and seemingly apologizes for not being able to get his money back. And then before he leaves, he also inspires him to train because, of course, he has that dog in him. That's how he managed to rip apart that punching bag after all. And so he starts with push-ups. Doesn't last very long, but an absolutely stunning lady notices him working out and decides to get him a protein drink. Honestly, what a wholesome lady, just making the world a better place. Enter Jay Yol, an enigmatic individual whom no one ever sees talk. Not only does he look 10 out of 10, but he's also filthy rich, which can be seen from his ridiculously expensive jewelry and attire. But when the guys try comparing Jay Yol's outfit to another hotshot, aka our main character, it's pretty easy to notice that his clothes are cheap and worn out. All the women are simply too blinded by his face and physique to notice his cheap clothes. Anyway, another student named Dao Kwa was getting bullied by a menacing dude named Ho Bin. Young Suk steps in and saves him for the time being. But Dao Kwa doesn't appreciate his superficial generosity at all. Or at least, not yet. Then, before the school day ends, Hyung Suk picks up a call from his mother, during which he's reminded of his birthday, which is tomorrow. Jae Yol was still in the classroom. He overhears it all. Now, remember the pretty lady who bought old Hyung Suk a protein drink? Well, she shows up and encourages him again. At school, Hyung Suk sits down with Jiho and Dao Kwa at the cafeteria. But Dao Kwa is pretty clear with how he distrusts people like him who try to be too nice. Anyway, so the boys who notice that Hyung Suk wears cheap clothes, as well as a member of Burning Knuckles come together to try to jump Hyung Suk when he's on his way back to school. But instead of getting jumped by them, he's silently greeted by Jae Yol, who then gives him his expensive designer clothes and accessories as a gift. As for the guys who were going to jump him, well, Jae Yol has already taken care of them. They still hadn't had enough though and were patiently waiting for Hyung Suk to show up so they can call him out on his cheap clothes, whatever that means. But of course, the next time they see Hyung Suk, he's fully tripped out from head to toe, and the girls can't stop talking about it. Following this, we see Dao Kwa and Hobin taking an audition. Unfortunately, Dao Kwa is told to go home before he could even share his voice, just because of his appearance. He wasn't even given the luxury of a performance, but he knows that this pain will only make his lyrics even stronger. Then he sees a poster of J1 High's talent show and decides to participate after another round of hardcore bullying. Later that day, when he finds his grandma at her noodle stall, Hobin and the other show up as well. His grandma thinks they're his friends and offers them food for free, and they just eat everything. All of it. This was a major blow to his grandma's business, but she still packs them something for later. Sadly, Dea Kwa sees from afar as these heartless people throw those bags in the garbage. People can be cruel sometimes, and this is not all that happened. They even spread false rumors about his grandma's stall. Then, when Hoban realizes that Dea Kwa is actually thinking of participating in the contest against him, he publicly reprimands and humiliates him in the cafeteria. But 
guess what? Young Suk, Jae Yol, and even Bosco, they all walk in and appear in front of Hobin, leaving him with no choice but to suck it up and bail. The next day, Young Suk greets Dale Kwa outside of school and presents his application for the contest. It was ripped in half, but he'd already taped it, so everything's cool. However, Dale Kwa doesn't trust him. He thinks that the only reason Young Suk is being nice to him is to try and play some sort of Gary Stu character. He also states that he strives to be just like Eminem, who also came from a sad and humble beginning, which is why all this pain and suffering will make his songs even better. Unfortunately, when Hoban later sees him writing lyrics for the contest, he beats him up and rips them apart. Seriously, the lookism is unreal in the series. He was lying on the ground when he overhears someone singing with a genuinely gratifying voice. He runs all the way up to the source of the voice and finds Young Suk just singing his melody. This was it. Daekwa had heard enough. He now wanted Hyung Suk to be his partner at the contest. Hyung Suk then later meets Daekwa at his place. The guy is rather nervous, wondering if Hyung Suk may look down on him more because of his rundown place, but since Hyung Suk is no difference, it doesn't take them long to become good buddies. They start working on their game, and Daekwa says something which really strikes a chord with Hyung Suk. He says that with Hyung Suk's singing and his rapping, they'll surprise everyone. When Hyung Suk is on his way back, he meets Daekwa's grandma who asks him if he'd like something to eat. But he respectfully declines, not because he wasn't hungry, but because he didn't want to hurt her business. Meanwhile, Hoban was also planning his game. A world-class songwriter wrote the song for him. He seems just as ready as Hyung Suk and Dae Hwa to take everyone off guard. One night, old Hyung Suk tries practicing the singing while still working at the convenience store. That pleasant lady overhears him this time, and she rewards him with a kiss. I mean, a, uh, well, throat lozenge. This helps him practice harder, and Dae Kwa is pleased with his progress. Hobin, on the other hand, doesn't like what he's seeing, so he pulls Dae Kwa and Ji Ho to the back alley and just beats them up. He finds them annoying for even trying to compete with him. Later, old Hyung Suk, Dae Kwa, and Ji Ho all sit together in solemn silence. But when Dae Kwa and Ji Ho mention how Hyung Suk joined the school, things started getting better, they're overheard by Bosco. He's surprised since he thought of him as the enemy. Bosco instantly asks if what they said is true, and they affirm. In the day leading up to the festival, Hyung Suk and Dae Kwa place the tying knot on their practice. They're ready. Finally, the promised day arrives. Remember the girl who's been buying our boy protein shakes and throat lozenges? She shows up in a supercar together with a guy named Gun. Gun seems to be acting as her bodyguard. Hyung Suk notices her from afar, completely forgets that he's in his other body, and decides to go say hello. Well, she doesn't like him since all she can see is some random playboy, and that makes things awkward. Gun then grabs Hyung Suk's arm with immense grip strength, but he manages to shake it off. Though Gun was no ordinary cookie, he then lands a kick so unusual that even Hyung Suk and his new body fell down on his knees. Conveniently, Bosco shows up. This time, he's here to back up Hyung Suk as a friend. Gun couldn't care less he lands a hard punch on Bosco's face, but not only does Bosco manage to bear the weight of it, the killer look in his eyes remains unfazed. He then asks Gun to take off his glasses because he doesn't fight nerds. Not just kidding. It's just a personal rule where he doesn't fight people with glasses. Then, when Gun takes them off, his eyes are revealed to be jet black. Just who the hell is he? This could have gotten ugly, but the nice lady asks Gun to stop because they were leaving. Following this, Bosco offers Hyung Suk some milk as a token of their new friendship, but because the contest had already begun, he had to go. Once there, Jae Yol gives them nice clothes while Hobin and his band gives their performance. They're stupidly good too, but as Hobin and his band returns backstage, he punches Dae Kwa in the gut for no reason at all. Young Suk wants to get back at him, but Dae Kwa reassures him they'll get their revenge on stage. Alright, so both of them show up on the stage. Comments are made about the difference in appearance of the two stars, but Dae Kwa doesn't care. He just picks up the mic and rolls with it, even though Young Suk at this moment has started getting stage fright. Dae Kwa's boldness spreads over to Young Suk, and the two of them let it all out. Their lives thus far, everything the world had thrown at them, their unpleasant upbringing, they let it all out through their song. Everyone's genuinely impressed. Bosco looks like he's about to tear up, but all of them burst into cheers and meet the vibe. The director who had Hoban's back was impressed as well, so he walks up to the two of them, but unfortunately, Hyung Suk is the only one he's interested in. Hyung Suk himself doesn't care though, especially since his friend wasn't considered. Later, Dae Kwa, Ji Ho, and old Hyung Suk sit together in the darkness to find comfort in each other's homey energy. They watch the video of the song, and while Dae Kwa wasn't considered, he is pleased with himself and with their performance. And that's pretty much it for the story of this anime adaption. However, the video was also seen by an unusual DJ as well as the nice lady. Apparently, she has a goofy separate body as well. All I'd say is that, for better or worse, Young Suk's new life has only just begun. So if you'd enjoyed this summary, you should definitely be thinking about checking out the webtoon. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just
just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.